Fellow journeyman, we have an absolute icon on the podcast today. Omar Gonzalez jumping in. LA Galaxy legend. I know that word gets thrown around pretty easily, but this guy befits that. One of the most successful defenders, American defenders, changed the sport, changed the sport in this country, uh, changed the structure and the way that MLS operates. I, it, it's tough to even go through all the accolades and the success that he's had. And we get to talk about a bunch of that uh, and also something very real in dealing with adversity and mental health uh, associated with it. it it's going to be, I think, a special talk with a guy that uh, Alan Gordon and I both have uh, a great amount of respect, but also um, deep experiences with. And it's uh, it's going to be a good one. What's the toughest part about being a journeyman in a new city? Well, Gordo, you know this as well as I do. Being a journeyman in a new city or a city that you're staying in is always difficult. The uncertainty of the future. Are you going to stay? Are you going to go somewhere else? Back in 2020 with Nashville SC, when we had a brand new team, everyone coming to a new city, there was only one person that we trusted to get our real estate needs done. And that's Erin Mishu with Fikes Realty Group. She made everything perfect, flawless, seamless. We had absolutely no issues getting into our house here in Nashville. And all my teammates felt the same way. You can check Aaron out at majorleague-realestate.com. I don't want to retire you like like Tim Howard retired Bobby Burling. You know, they, have you guys heard that story? No, no. Please tell us. Uh, dude, this is this is one of the best moments I've ever been a part of in my entire life. So <laughs> when I was with the Rapids, it was it was my last game, and everybody knew it. I was going to retire, and <clears throat> Tim. Tim knew, I think, a little bit more than other players. You know, I think he was in in conversations with the GM. And uh, and Bobby wanted to play another year, you know. And it was always that. We all know. It's like one of those things, like, will they pick, will they pick up my option? Will they not? You know, I want to play one more probably. Yep. And the last, the last huddle before we go out to the game, Tim's like, he brings everybody in the locker room. He's like, boys. This is Gordo and Bobby's last game ever. Oh, <laughs> and I and I I pop my head up and I look at Bobby. He's like, he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> lo, and behold, thanks, lo and behold, that was his last game ever. <laughs> and, and I and I played another year. <laughs> 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 it was it was classic, dude. So oh classic. Oh my god, that's uh, pretty. So that so awesome. so back so back to my point is, I mean, I guess I'll just ask you: is this is this it for you, or are you in that state of like, maybe I'll do one more, depending on how the I mean, depending on how the season goes. I'd like to. Are they going to pick up my option? Like, where are you at right now? I'd love to play another year. I mean, why not? Okay. Body feels good. Yeah. Um, I love training every day. Like I came into like the past two seasons with the expectation of like not playing at all. Like it's just, it's just the position that I've been put in. Like, yeah. And, and I'm just the oldest guy on the team. So it's like, we don't see you as a starter anymore. And like, I wrapped my head around just being a good practice player, getting the starters ready. Like I love, I love it. I'm I'm here for it, and also it just prepares me in a way that if I do get an opportunity, I'm ready to go. You're loose, and so and you're loose. That too, being loose is. Uh, I felt like last game, which Dan was there for, um, was the first time that I've been loose in a while. Fitness. It's just like, it's just uh, the stress that comes into it. You don't know when your last game is going to be, and like the stress of like, okay, I'm getting an opportunity. I got to be so good so that I can turn that one opportunity into two. And so like, just, just finding the right headspace of just playing free. That's what I want to do this year, man. Just enjoy it. If, if, if I could turn it into another year, that'd be amazing. Cause I'd love to do it. I'd love to keep doing it. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. The last time we played, when we played together in LA, you were 25, 26, 27, 10 years ago. Right. Um, Jeez. where, now that you're a vet, we've we've talked about this a lot on, on this on this podcast. You're in a different headspace. You're a different player. You're the things that you just mentioned in terms of 
you know, you're signed to a contract, you're not expected to start, you're just supposed to be a mentor, blah, 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 blah. All the things that kind of get heaped on you as a vet. Personally, I'll share my opinion. I think the whole like playing younger players just because they're younger to get them experience, I think is bullshit at the professional level, at the, at the top. I think that you, you, yeah. you earn your minutes regardless of what, what and who you are. Um, now that you are, you're what, 35? Are you 35? Yeah. 35? Yeah. I'll 35. be 36. I think. And, and now having witnessed your play in person, you are obviously still playing at a high level. Do you feel like, how do you feel now having seen a lot of that? You're in a position where do you still go out every day and, and this is an easy answer for you because I know what you're going to say, but is that approach still exactly the same or has the approach evolved? And and how do you kind of manage that approach? Um, the approach is the same, you know, and, and it wasn't easy. My first year at New England, it wasn't easy because I was going there expecting, you know, to fight for a starting position and, and midway through the season, uh, a player comes back from injury and he just starts – after me having played a great game and I'm just like angry and, you know, just furious and, and uh-huh. is spiraling down confidence goes. I can't even pass the ball. You know, you know how it goes. It's just, yeah. I lived and, my entire career in this place. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so like at, at some point I had to switch the mind frame, you know, and it's just, um, you know, uh, I ended up calling Greg Berhalter just some, just for some advice because like when I was a rookie, you know, he was at the end of his career and I was like, what was your recipe? What was your formula for, 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 for dealing with the coaching staff that were, you know, who doesn't want to play you and, and in limited minutes and, and you still feel good. You feel like you could be yeah. a starter. You still like sure. you could, you know, be out there game in, game out, but it's just out of, out of, out of your con- control. And it's just basically managing your expectations. You know? which, which is also an interesting dichotomy for you because you were playing under a manager that had previously given given you every start and given you every minute and every game, regardless of you know who was playing in front of you, which I, I was witness to. And, and having kind of to change that mindset is tough. It's a totally different mindset, right? Like you are having to have to motivate yourself past, I think, other other factors other variables that may not be in your control and and that is it's it's an interesting evolution for you that i think i mean shit what an incredible career you've had from mls rookie of the year from a starting point right starting point mls rookie of the year coming off of an incredible collegiate career at maryland coming off of you what else did you do supporter shields i think you had a couple of those three mls cups like best 11s in mls all stars yada 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 all the all the things that you've done and accomplished and now having to kind of reshape your mindset and you talked a, a little bit about you know the the mentality of it the mental side of things i, I wanted to touch on that because you you put out a a, a really i think eye opening um and vulnerable post on, on social media about the, I think it was specifically about the Q collar, but really it was about your, mm. your mental state and, and the mental side of, of the game. Is that something that was sticking with you through your career? Or is that something that kind of came on at the end of it? Was that a, you know, a, where, where did that kind of evolve or at least where did, where did your uh, awareness uh, of that evolve? Yeah, <clears throat> I think, um, definitely wasn't there in the beginning or middle it started i think you know just the world cup you know when when uh when we Impressive. didn't qualify the the own goal yeah and you know from the, everything up up until that point was wins you know championships and and just going straight up man, and consistent you know like yep. it was amazing and then comes this point and we didn't qualify and then I lose a uh, Copa MX, and then I go to MLS Cup again in 2019, and I lose to, or we lose to Seattle, and yep. and it's just like you losing Canadian championships. This is like felt like every big moment that I had, it was just like fuck. And then I started thinking, is it me? Like, sure. am I am, am I the reason? Like, it just keeps following me. But and then uh, you know. Like, but I was dealing with that just fine, right? Like, 
and then came a couple of head injuries and, and, and it just sort of, um, like made everything worse. And, and, um, I started forgetting people's names and, and then like came this period of time where, where the stress was too much. The head injuries were just compounding and the stress of being away from home, baby on the way contract year. I mean, everything that goes into it. Yep. I just started thinking of every single way to just end it. You know, just every part of my day was just thinking of a way to just end it. And, you know, it was just, it was just fighting through that still trying to play at a high level, you yeah. know, and still giving everything to, to the sport and putting on a different face is draining, you know, to just, no one knew about it, you know, yeah. but I have to go into hey. training and, Go ahead. Omar, are you talking about ending your life or ending your career? My life. Yeah. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, was it? Yeah, yeah. And That's um, heavy, Yeah, it was a uh, it was very scary and like I was just dealing with it and going to training, still being myself like you know, no which one is, knew. Which which is on hard a to, that's face. hard to imagine, right. man, because right. oh, you're like you know, like you you're your infectious positivity, I think, is one of your best traits. Like you are the, in the best way, one of the sure. goofiest, happiest people, most positive people that that I've been around, that I've spent time in yeah. in a locker room with. And for you to be saying, feeling the things that you were feeling, but also having to put on that face, I, I can only imagine how difficult that must have been. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was very difficult. And then it got like tough. Like I just didn't want to leave my room when I was home and. And like, and then it came, like, I think it was after like a New York city game, you know, we're having a shit year. We were in last place, like just awful, awful yeah. Yeah. environment. Just the, the locker room was absolute dog shit. Like it was bad. Um, and, and we, we give this great performance for once we, we, you know, we're down to zero at half and we come back and we tie the game up and like we fight and everything. And, pumped you know but then after the game everything just came to a head i just started bawling like just like started bawling talked to the doctor i was like i need i need help like this can't go on and then yeah. from that from that moment on uh you know things got a lot better just just finding help but um yeah it was it was a tough what? couple months hey let, let's speak to that help because <clears throat> you know i'm I've been through a few moments myself and everybody's different. And, you know, you'll post post playing career poses its different challenges, um, you know, on players that are used to a certain life. And then you go into something else and you get into a different, you know, financial situation and you have family to support. And there's always moments of trial and, uh, I'm sure you felt this way too. And I'll speak honestly. Like I never, I, I, I don't describe myself ever as really being depressed. But when you look back at moments, you're like, maybe I was, you know, and I, I never wanted to kind of accept that, but, you know, so I think that men's health is a, is a huge topic. And I've talked to a few guys and, We've been talking amongst, we have a group of guys that of ex, of ex players and just to kind of get stuff off your chest to other, um, former athletes or, or current athletes, um, I think is really important, dude, because I think that men, we don't, we're always supposed to, like you said, you know, put on that tough face and just wear it and all the stress and everything that you were dealing with. Nobody understands. Everybody just sees Omar Gonzalez as, you know, all the things that Dan said, three-time MLS champion, you know, probably has money. Nobody's going to feel sorry for you that doesn't know you, right? But to hear your story, dude, it, it kind of tears me up because um, cause I kind of I, I experienced my own version of that. And so talk to me a little bit and the listeners about, you know, what that help look like, because I think, I think there's a lot of guys struggling, you know, and I think we all have our own journey, 
but I, I want to, I want to hear like what, what helped you, what helped you get out of that. And it, it, it kills me to hear that like you were contemplating in such, in such a dark spot, dude. like that, that hurts me, you know? So talk to me about what helped you to that maybe can give some other guys hope that are listening and maybe in a dark spot. Yeah. Um, well, 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 first I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that, you know, you got to your dark times too. Um, you know, and what helped me, um, just, I've always been a guy that's been open to like sports psychology and, 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 um, talking with someone, you know, yeah. it's, it, it's always been about the sports side though. And so now it was just talking to someone about this, this, just these thoughts that I'm, that I'm having and, I know I don't really want to do it, but it's all consuming. Like it's all I think about. I mean, it, it was just crazy stuff that I was thinking, like where to do it, when to do it, how to do it, what the reactions of my family, uh, having witnessed my body somewhere. Like, you know, it was just crazy stuff. And just talking to someone, talking to a professional, just getting it all out there, then helping you, you know, gather your thoughts, where to go from there, uh, giving you anchors to bring you back, you know, bring you back to, to, um, just reality and where you are and being grateful and, and the good things that you have in life and what is actually important. And, and, and so I think the main key is just being open to talking to someone. And, and I think you said it best too, is just being vulnerable. These discussions that we're having now, um, knowing that someone else has gone through it, that you're not alone, yeah. especially someone that's been in your position before, you know, sure. it's, it's hard to speak to someone who doesn't get the stress of, of our job or anyone else's job. You just, you just can't, you know, really, you don't know. And so yeah. there, there's also that side to it. And, and it's not like it was just one, one person. There were, there were a few different people. My wife, Erica was amazing, you know, just, just, yeah. uh, a rock as always. And, and yeah. so that, that's a few of the things, but just finding, finding someone to talk to. It's, it's that's great. It's, I think it's really, it's really powerful to hear you speak about it. Oh, because I think that we can all agree that a locker room as close as you are in a locker room and as close as you are as brothers, there's still a stigma against vulnerability because you still have oh, to go yeah. out and perform and it is a bunch of alphas, right? So yeah. giving as much as, as much as we, we are all brothers and as much as we are, you know, supportive of one another, you also know that, you know, the, the food on the table comes from how you perform on a Saturday night and knowing that there's, you know, there's question marks in people's minds. Any, any bit of that can certainly can, it's almost like it. sometimes I feel like it feels like it's contagious and you know that you kind of sit on this like razor's edge of, of being this super alpha, but also having to appreciate whatever it is that you're going through. Like, I remember these moments, um, you know, it's a really astute observation from you, Gordo, which you're pretty good with. Um, but recognizing moments in your past where maybe you were depressed and, and didn't want to, you know, verbalize it or acknowledge it. I, I think about um, a moment when we were all playing together and a moment in, in Seattle when we went up to the Western Conference Championship. I, I was going through an awful lot in Seattle. I had been I had a tough game in Salt Lake and I had been dropped. Um, and then brought back into the lineup um, to go to Seattle where we needed to get a result. Um, and I think you guys know this. We, you know, we were going through everybody having babies and at the time, and we, I was one of the last and we had been, you know, kind of enduring um, what was going on with AJ and, and, AJ. Matt, um, and others. Oh, I think yeah. Todd had, uh, had um, his daughter and there, there were a couple that, that were kind of going through the process there. Um and and I remember being brought back into the to the lineup and we were actually all supposed to go out for coffee and I couldn't do it. And I walked to I walked to the Space Needle and I cried from the moment that I walked out the door until the whatever, 27 minutes that I got to the Space Needle. 
And then it was it was gone. But it was one of those moments where like I couldn't even tell anybody. I couldn't even tell you guys. I, I tell I told you guys everything. Like as we were we were a pretty open book. Um, but I didn't I didn't even want that to be infectious before the biggest game of our season and the biggest game of sure. my career or one of the biggest games of my career. Um, and it's really difficult to do. It's really difficult to hold on to that and and then go out and like you're talking about, put your face on and perform because there's a concern and I think it's I think it's natural, but there's a concern that it will affect others in a negative way when in reality, it does seem like it's shaping the shape of it is changing to a place where you can appreciate that we all go through shit and we're all going through shit actively. And, and it is a place where I think the perception is is starting to evolve. And it's I, I mean, I really applaud you, Omar, for doing it because it is something that is different. Like Gordo and I can talk about it. We're we're past our careers, but you talking about it is is a different place for you because it's a tough spot to be in and it's a tough spot to walk back in the locker room. You are now a 35 year old man with a family and kids and responsibilities and a, a sack full of experiences. That's the size of, you know, Santa's toy uh, sack. And it, and, and you can draw on that and essentially squash any type of, Hey, this guy's not going to be ready for a game um, type of talk. But when you're not in that place as a young player, as a 22 year old or a 25 year old, or even somebody that's trying to break into a lineup that, it can be a different position for them. So I, 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 I was really and, uh, proud of you. And, doing- and like, you know, just, just going back to your story, like imagine if you did, you know, like tell us that you had spent the whole time crying, like, like, fuck, that creates connection, man. That, that it would have been okay. That, it would have been totally. okay. And, and you're right. It and you're been right. Been but it, but in, we don't, but mind, we don't think that way though. You that's don't, the point. Yeah. you don't. Yeah. Um, it would have been okay. I, and, and that night we, we would have been like, we got this guy's back. You we know, you do your yeah. thing and we got you. Let's go get this win. You know, like, like we did I just, with AJ. Like, I, like we you did, did with AJ. AJ. A- abs- like absolutely right. AJ. And, but all of but, uh, us, you're all in, we're all in different places, right? Like we're, as much as we're on a team, we all process things in different ways. You know, like I was, I was waiting for the birth of my daughter who I had made the decision to walk out the door that morning to go to Seattle Knowing she didn't want to come out, right? She that she could have been born, right? And and I was going to yeah. miss it. And you're you know you're balancing all this shit. Like I'm walking out the door, and my father in law is like, "Hey man, good luck up there. If we have the baby, we'll let you know." And I was like, "Hey, <laughs> fuck yourself, man!" Like, what? <laughs> you know, and and yeah. it's, it's like it's all those things that kind of come up. But you're absolutely right. Like we you don't see all those angles and you're, you know, we, we, man, we put our arms around AJ as much as we could for the season. And that was something that was incredibly powerful um, that maybe you don't always take. into account. Here's what I want to say is that Omar, like part of, part of growing up dude, and part of being a veteran in your position is we, we don't learn anything unless we fail, unless we go through these trials and tribulations and these massive hard parts of our, of our life, you know? And so what I would encourage you to do and what I, what is so surreal to me, you know, and, and Gargs, I'm sure is that we were the veterans and we were the old guys, you know, when you were young and you were in your prime and you were flying. Right. And, You know, as I mentioned before, it's really sad to see anybody go through, especially the level of uh, in the depths that you got to. But you you came out and that that builds character. And so part of being an adult and being a father and being a mentor and being a veteran is I would encourage you to just walk into the next two or three you know, one, two or three years of the rest of your career and just focus on that and just focus on your experience with what you've dealt with and give it to the young guys. Because going back to Gargs, when you're young and Gargs was fairly young when he was going through those things, I remember giving Gargs a hug. He was probably, I was probably the only guy he ever told you when we were in San Jose and you, you guys had your first miscarriage and I gave you a big hug. And that's about as deep as it went, but I, you know, we were, that was about as tough guy of love as you get. It was like a big hug and, you know, it was a 
couple tears, you know, and then we moved on. Yeah. But like, just, just focus on being that guy for those young guys. Cause they're not going to tell you everything they're, they're, they're not wired that way. And we weren't so, and that's what I was trying to do. And it sounds like you're doing that and it's surreal to me. And I'm so proud of you because, you know, you were the young kid and the, you know, the, you know, the, throw caution at the wind kind of guy and nothing there's no problems in the world and you've matured immensely right and so if you go in every day like i'm gonna i'm gonna help out these young guys um then you're gonna you're gonna perform because you're gonna be so confident and you're gonna be so you're gonna be so fulfilled with the leadership and the support that you're giving to these kids that soccer is just gonna revert back to your innate skills. You're not going to feel pressure because you're what you're there to do uh, ultimately is just be a veteran for these guys and, and pave the way because you've walked a tough road on a, on a dirt road and you've paved it for them. And you're like, listen, I've been, I've been here, dude. And if you got something, just come to me, dude. And I'm, and I, I can provide some advice for you. Right. And so yeah. this is, this is crazy. I don't even know how we got started on this conversation, but I'm mm -hmm. so glad that we went this route, dude, because I, I'm just. And that's I'm one of the reason of why I decided to post it was because like, I can't hold on to this anymore. Like it was, yeah. it was just time. Like I held it, you know, it was just it's powerful, my mom. It's my mom didn't even know my mom the other day. Wow. My oh, mom no. came and get my mom. We went out to to brunch the other day, and she gives me the biggest hug. Like, just you know, I'm so happy you're here. Kind That's of incredible. thing, you know. Like, like yeah. I didn't know anything, you know, and just you know, the hug lasted. I don't know, thirty seconds to a minute. It was a long one, but it was, yeah. you know, you feel like shit. Like, fuck, I should have told her. But like, you deal with it the way you deal with it. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, I, I mean, and now let's let's switch gears a little bit because you are in Dallas, you know, in, in your hometown, around your family. I, I, Gordo, I had the opportunity to to go and see O oh, play and got the start and played great. Picked up a point in St. Louis, um, scored a goal that got pulled back, but you, yeah. and, man, I saw the passion and happiness on your face, which in in every moment of it, like before the game just texting with you and the excitement that you could it was palpable and then at the game and the just the natural exuberance from scoring that goal that you could see like just the look around it, it was it was really cool and then you know giving you a hug after the game and, and seeing your face and and helping your squad pick up a, a tough point on the road it, it you know where where are you at now T tell me just how that feels w with the spot that you're in well well Tying back into a little bit what Gordo was saying just a few seconds ago, I think I played well because it was one of those games where we were about to slide. Like our season was going down, you uh -huh. know, and it was one of those heart games. It was like, we let, let's find out what we're made of. Like, let's go back to the basics and like, let's just work hard. Let's yeah. just, and, and let's get the details right. Let's not get switched off on fo focusing on what the referee, the call he got wrong. Let's just, so like I was so focused on just my teammates and just like making sure they're not switching off because they're mad about the referee, just switching them back into the game. You know, I, I, I don't know how many times we were under pressure and I'm like, you know, we've been, but we don't fucking break. Let's keep going, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was just, just pushing these guys. And I, I think that's why I was just not even worried about myself. I was just playing like that. And it, it just felt good. You know, stay like stay right so, there, brother. And you stay could right tell. There. I could tell. You could tell. Oh, because like the game seemed very simple for you on that evening, and the amount of you know minutes and games and all of those passes and forwards that you've defended and and all of it, it just seemed like it was easy. It and, and that's the way that you made it seem. And for a center back, like in your position, the best center backs in the world, in my opinion, are almost non-existent in a lot of ways that you don't see them in the game because they cover and clean up everything and everything just seems so simple and so methodical and they make the game look look effortless and you you did that that night and um it was cool to and see unless we not forget you know i was a barista that morning 
Dude, which is also insane. Dude, yeah, Gordo, have you seen this clip? Dude. Have you seen this clip, Gordo? So Tommy, I've seen all of his clips. He's no, a, he's a you, great baker. He no, 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 not that, not that clip, not that clip, dude. This guy was so Tommy Meyer, who we all played with, is uh, is a St. Louisan. He moved back to St. Louis. He finished his modeling career, or he's still mo moonlighting as a super uh, attractive human being. Um, but anyway, he opens up a coffee shop in St. Louis. Omar goes in his full FC Dallas kit, right? Hat, sweatshirt, like <laughs> collared shirt, shorts, track issued, like shoes. It was so good. This guy is behind the counter with Tommy Meyer, the two of them making cappuccinos for like, that, how long were you behind the, like an hour? For St. Louis guy. fans? I was back for St. Louis, Louis fans. Like... So all the St. Louis fans are coming in and they're like, Who's this asshole FC Dallas fan pouring us shots? It was so, oh, dude, it's so good. This is so on the game day. Game on day. Game day I go there for a coffee, you know? Right. As and we I'm do. sitting back just watching, you know? I'm going there to catch up with Tommy. And, and it's only Tommy there. And his parents are also there helping out. But his mom is, like, having conversations with, with, with you know, the patrons and – the dad is back there toasting bread and it's getting out of control. He's only been open for like less than a month. Yeah. And so he's black, still getting black the swing lab, of it. black lab coffee STL. It's in, uh, That's it's right. in Elmar loop. It's really, it's, it's a spot. Uh, good for, good awesome. for him, dude. Yeah. But I could see the, it was about to get out of control. It was only Tommy going. And I was like, I got it. I got to jump in. I got to help out. <laughs> <laughs> so I jumped in and I, I like coffee, so I know how to work the machines. And, and so I just, I just got to work. And Erica was like, so how's his girlfriend? How's this? I was like, we didn't talk. <laughs> we were just like, we didn't even get to catch up. I was just, it was just laser focused, just working on like just espressos, cappuccinos, getting the orders through. And it was That's just so one of the fun. best stories ever. Did he pay you? Uh, I should invoice him. I should Dude, invoice him. <laughs> Venmo his ass right now. Tommy Meyer, you owe Omar some labor fees, bro. Oh, so, him a 1099. So <laughs> later that day, I asked him, I was like, is it, is it always that busy? He's like, that's the busiest we've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, dude. Is it, is it, is it downtown close to the stadium? It's not far. It's in, uh, it's in another yeah. little neighborhood that's like, Northwest that's, of the stadium. That's one of the um, best stories I've ever you. heard, dude. It's awesome. Yeah. It's, dude, it, but it, hey, uh, when you when you don't think about the game, the morning of the game, oh you play so good. So good. It's the best. It's the best. It's, it's just, just hard to get into that area. About, it's, it is. Know, how many days this past couple of years where I just have like constipation, diarrhea, fuck it, I'm just nervous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's hey. all bullshit. It's all bullshit. The just don't think about it. The day of the game is just an absolute murder scene. <laughs> for anybody that doesn't know that, it is a murder scene. There's nothing don't go like in there it. for like 40, 40, 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your body knows that it's about to go through hell. So it's just like, I'm getting everything out right yeah. now. Maybe four times. Oh, Dude, so I got, I got a great story for you. Oh, um, your boy, your, your, uh, your Batman and Robin, the duo, the, the dynamic duo of AJ and Omar. So I go to your game and I'm like, man, this guy is crushing it, still doing it. And then I'm scrolling through Instagram like a couple of days later and AJ posts something about his game. So I don't, if you, I'm sure you know this, Omar, yeah. um, Gordo, AJ played for the Des Moines Menace in the Open Cup and they, he went through, this uh he signed him to a game whatever um him and question so i'm like i'm scrolling through the stories and he posts something about getting ready for the game and i had just come off like seeing you oh and i was like oh my god this isn't this is incredible like these these guys are still doing it like i'm so I, I was i was like in my feels and i was i was really excited for aj so i texted him i'm like dude just saw that story kind of tight good luck tonight he responds back and he's like yeah Game was last night. We lost and I scored an own goal. Went great. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh shit, AJ, I'm sorry, man. And he was like, I told this guy, I was like, what are you doing retiring? He's over there playing pickup. He's going to he indoor loves games. It. He loves traveling. it. He's playing TST. He can't He's get enough of it. I was like, place. why did you ever retire? 
No shit. Well, hey, Omar, he's he's wait, better today Omar. than he was back then. <laughs> can we get can we get an early signing for you to play with Sneaky Fox TST? What after you retire? After you retire. Yeah, I mean, I'm there. AJ's gonna kill me. But I don't He's think that's gonna dude, dude. I just I just sparked some shit. Wow. You got me you get you you're getting me in trouble right now. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as this goes live, yeah, I'm but get you some love hate, some hate messages. But you love McGee. I know you and AJ are tight, but you love McGee. You guys had a thing at one point. I mean, me and AJ are super tight, but the vibe at Sneaky Fox looked amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there he is. AJ, the Val think- FC, better better do some work, man. That's in, you're in Val trouble. FC was a little too serious. So, you know, it was a little, <laughs> little too serious. Dude, they trained for like a month. <laughs> and then we beat them. It's like, dude, get out of here. Stop it. <laughs> oh, McGee, legend. I love him. I love legend. him. Legend. Gordo, are you playing this year? <laughs> 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 Don't ever ask me that again. I just played golf for three days and I can't even walk. I, I'm, <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm done. I, I'll never play ever again, and that's okay. No, I played way too long. Oh, but I want to. I want to go, go through some. I want to go through some history with you. Um, first and foremost, tell me, tell me if I'm, tell me what I'm missing here. Galaxy, Pachuca, Atlas, TFC, Revs, FC Dallas. Did I miss anything? Journeyman. Journeyman. Thank you for stealing my thunder, Gordo. I think you are officially. A I went to Nuremberg for Nuremberg I, on loan when right. I tore my ACL. One one training there. Thir- when minutes. was that? When what, was that? that? 2011 or 12? 2012. 2012. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So you're so you're. You gonna... I think you're officially a journeyman. National team? Does that count? Does national, national team. team? Uh, yeah, we we don't really count that, but um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think. Uh, Am I officially a journeyman? I, I Hell think yeah. We are not we are we are inviting you into the club. Let's go. Do I get like uh what do we what do I get for that? We need no. to get shirts, dude. We gotta shirts. get shirts, guards. Yeah, we we've been on the merch for a little while, but we haven't officially a hat, put a hat for sure. I think, a hat. I think we gotta the, get shirts. The hats dude. could be gold. I think you're we getting get one. Hats, you're getting one. Yeah. I love it. Uh, I'm happy we'll that I'm part of the club. Special yeah. club. Yeah. It is. It's an honorary club. That's for damn sure. Um, and I, I think you are. I know that you listen to some of the pods, so you know that it is not a negative connotation. I think it comes with worldly experience, um, the journeyman, and uh, really an incredibly invaluable position within the teams. Gordo, we live in crazy times right now. What are things looking like in the real estate market? Oh, Dax, you know that rates are always going to be the best with Synergy One Lending, and those are always going to fluctuate. But one thing that never fluctuates, that's the service you get with Erin from Bikes Realty Group. She is the number one agent I will refer all my clients to. She handles all the obstacles up front, really takes the stress out of any transaction and move that you have. Check out my girl Erin Mishu with Bikes Realty Group at majorleague-realestate.com. I want to ask you some some tough questions, and I want some honest answers. Um Best Galaxy team you played on? Best Galaxy team? Uh, has to be the 2011 team where we won supporters in the MLS Cup. It's a tough thing to do, man. So I asked um, I asked LD the same question, same answer, um, which I was I was surprised to hear. Um, Who do you think was – you wanted it to be 2014 because you were playing, right? No, because that was the best team that I played on. Um, and I, I wanted, I just wanted a, another voice that obviously played on the team, but was on. We were just, it was just us the whole way. And like watching it now, these teams doing now, LAFC, you know, just, just like you're watching, like, damn, that used to be, I, I used to be on a team like that. Uh It is incredible feeling. You just go into every game knowing you're going to win and Uh it's amazing. It is not amazing. to take not to take anything away from any of you guys because you all you all put in your part right, but I just remember Landon and Kino, and they were they were so amazing up top, dude. Their movement and their understanding for each other, and it, it, it was it was truly like kind of special to watch. You know, it's like very few. Everybody else was really good. 
Um, but watching them and usually forwards get all the credit as they do. Mm -hmm. They were just, they were a handful, dude. And they were, they're both so clever and so smart, dude. It, they were almost unstoppable when they were clicking, man. I mean, that dummy. The dummy. Every really? time. It's the dummy. Yeah, That's exactly dummy what I had in my mind. Every time. Every single, every time. single time. You knew it was coming, but you just couldn't stop it. Couldn't do couldn't it. You it. Couldn't do anything about it. Um, and yeah, that's the thing about those days too. It's like, we never changed for anyone. It like, like the past few teams I've been on, you know, it's like you change every week, depending on who you're playing. Like sometimes you just, you just go, you be yourselves. And, and that's what felt so good. It's that like, we just worried about ourselves. Yeah. We focused on what we were going to, how we were going to impose ourselves on the game. And we just went for it. Yeah. Well, Bruce was, also, also didn't know how to change, but that's that's a <laughs> that's a moot point. We're play a four four two today. Who <laughs> really gives a shit no. about formations anyway? Because the, they don't that's mean it. That's kind of his brilliance, right? It, it doesn't get too it's tactical. Eleven guys on the field, <laughs> and you have to win your battles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god just the most basic statements ever right it's so good you're like, we, ah, i guess you're right it was we we just got to score more goals than the other team that's it <laughs> last time i checked if you score more than they do you win, <laughs> right <laughs> oh, uh, it's he almost like he beat you down into the the thinking overthinking things and it was like oh yeah this is a simple game let's make sure that we keep it simple and yeah, yeah. you know to your point oh about not changing for anybody um you know gordo did i want it to be the 2014 team i wouldn't have hated it but i also know that like being a, a former galaxy player is something that i am incredibly proud of obviously winning a championship with the galaxy was something that will stay with me forever right but i also understand that the galaxy is an incredible organization and there are levels to that club, especially for players like Omar, who is LA galaxy royalty. Like it is, there's a different level there, multiple championships, the amount of appearances that you had with the club, like it's, it's, it's pretty special. So that's why asking that question, because I know it as the years that I played for the galaxy was the first time that I actually felt uh, a real target on our back every single game. You have to show up and represent the galaxy. And that was the first time that I had felt that in my professional career. There's you had you had been doing that oh specifically for multiple years. Gordo, you did it for two different stints. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so that I think that there there are differentiations and I and I and I can appreciate that. Um who is, in your opinion, the best player to wear a galaxy jersey? the best player has to go to LD, right? I mean, he was there he for all of vote. them. He is my vote. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, there, is there, in your mind, is there a debate? Kobe, Kobe will probably feel solidity for that. You yeah, know? he's not going to be happy yeah. with you. <laughs> no, no, no. You're going to catch let you know it. I'm going to get a call from that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Kobe. <laughs> Sorry, Kobe, Kobe was legit, dude. Kobe was legit. Kobe was amazing. Yeah. Hey, listen, when you, when, you pick, when you pick the best of all time, like, it's 1A, 1B, 1C, right? Yeah, like, you split hairs. You, you, you split hairs. You can't – it's not – it's no knock on anybody. And Kobe paved, oh. the, paved the way. We talk about paving the way, dude. That – that guy definitely did pave the way. He paved the way for me in a big way. Still, still doing it, to be fair. I mean, still look at what he's it. doing. He's still involved. And and he deserves for, credit for it. Like, a lot the, of different things. The older things. players, they, they, do, they deserve credit. I mean, the newer players, I mean, athletes are getting better every single year, right? I mean, yeah. it's like it's, you know, but, you know, to be the first one to do it is is something special. What was uh, What was your most rewarding championship? You've had a number of them. How many did you have in Mexico? I won one league title, CONCACAF, and then uh, we went to the Club World Cup and got third. Okay. Uh, so what's the most important? Most important? Um, no, most rewarding. Most rewarding. 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 It has That's to different. be the 2012 one, I think. 2012. Oh, uh, Mexico could have been there. It's between those two. 2012, just because I tore my ACL in January, like worked my ass off to get back in five and a half months. Yep. Damn. You know, the team was, I think we we're in last place. 
and you know just you know multiple calls with you know the doctor bruce bruce pushing me to get back as fast as possible and me just being scared and just like worried about if my knee was ready yeah and then just and then just going for it and and like playing and then fighting with the team and just fighting for that playoff spot getting to the championship game and then scoring a goal getting mvp of the game like like that it was a crazy year crazy year but a special one for me and then the mexico one is also special just because um you know galaxy didn't want me anymore you know they just didn't see the value anymore mm -hmm. and and so i said fuck it i'm gonna go somewhere else then and i got to pachuca and i went in my first uh uh tournament there so um it was just something that was special for me just you know saying that you know you lost something but someone else gained something and that's it those are those yes. are pretty good those are pretty good how does it feel to be at home incredible i didn't think i wanted to be like ever come back to dallas yeah you know i just like um i didn't i didn't like other than my family being here it's just uh I lived on, you know, the south side of town, you know, just, it was just, when you're a kid, you're just being dragged around everywhere. Yeah. Well, and, you've been gone a long time. That's yeah, what happens yeah. to us. You, you leave for a long time. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, it just felt like it was a good time to come home. The opportunity was there. I had no other opportunity. So <laughs> it was, uh, that, <laughs> there's that, that made sounds the like a great opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> so it made the choice very easy. Uh, um, and then, uh, you know, Dallas is incredible, like being back and seeing how the city's blown up and just the amount of great restaurants, uh, the amount of like neighborhoods that are just so nice and so many things for the family to do. So like, let's, let's, I'm finish up, it. let's finish up a little bit with where FC Dallas is headed, because I think that I didn't play for I him. have 2%. Okay, good. Well then, it, then it'll be quick. <laughs> Gordo hasn't played for him, but I, I think that we we all from the outside looking in have seen a, a couple different iterations of this club. You know, they were built on youth development and then they moved on from Lucci and Fernando Clavijo moves on. And, and there's there's a couple different pieces that are significant components of that. Now, they're, now I, you know, I, I don't know if I could really adequately characterize who the identity of FC Dallas is. Can you help us understand that? Who the identity of FC Dallas are? Um, yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of tough. I mean, I'm just getting here, and and for my whole career, I've always just been focused on you know on where I've been, and 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 so just paying attention to Dallas from afar. You know, yep. you summed it up pretty well. And 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 now that I'm here, um, the beginning of this year has been pretty tough because in preseason, I mean, I looked at our roster, I looked at the talent training starting to train with the guys i was like damn we got a, a very good team we have uh -huh. a team that could go far and 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 then the league starts and you get punched in the face and 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 now we're trying to find out who we are and 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 see what we're made of and and so when you ask who are i or what our identity is um i think we're a team that 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 wants to play football yep we're a team that that you know, from what I've seen in the past couple of years is that they thrive on high pressing and, and we have to get back to that. We have to be able to turn teams over being mm -hmm. aggressive, playing mm -hmm. good football and, 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 and just being hard to play against. And, 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 and so I think that's what, that's who we are. And, and we got to just uh, be who we say we are. Dude, who's, who's the number nine on your team? Um, the big kid Dude, who plays on top. Petar Musa. Dude, he was fun to watch, man. What an athletic freak. I mean, you're yeah, talking about yeah. pressing teams. And it starts, obviously, with the nine, but he was all over the field, still running hard. And, like, I noticed – I think I picked my head up, and I was like, this is the 88th minute in that game. It was crazy. Just amazing athlete. I mean, like, he's, he's like, 6'5". He can – he has long range, you yeah. know, good feet, really good in the box. It's just now we have – you know, we have to figure out – how best to use him, you know, uh -huh. and, and we have to, you know, we just have to get in sync with him. And I think that's, you know, taken a little, a, a little bit of time, but, but when he gets fully acclimated to MLS, to our team, 
he's going to be really, really fun to watch, and he's going to score a ton of goals. I really, I really do believe it. Dude, I think I, I saw the same thing. So uh, we're on the same page. It, it, can you give me can you give me a young name uh, of anybody that we should be keeping our eyes on? Uh, I mean, FC Dallas has been notorious for producing pretty incredible talent. Um, is there anybody that you've seen? I know you haven't been there a ton, a ton of time, but is there any names that are that kind of pop up in conversation in that locker room? I mean, just who's had a hard start for in my eyes in this preseason uh, and the first you know, the first game scoring the game winner is Don T. Seeley. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just, just ton of pace. He related skill. to Scott Seeley. Yeah. That's his son. No yeah. way. No way. I thought it was. And I was like, maybe, I, I don't know. I could, is, is it really? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. And so Baller. he's, 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 I think 20. Oh, wow. 20. Yeah, yeah. He was just at PSV came back and, and um, just, Ton of skill, um, you know. It's it's been hard to get in his head, but I'm I'm trying to dig my dig my way in there and just trying to help him out. You know, help getting to help him understand uh, details that could take his game to the next level. And it's uh, have you him know, over to to bake some bread or something. Teach him teach him <laughs> a new skill. Yeah, there you go, there you go. I mean, uh, Bruce is always always on me about uh, um, doing other stuff not involved. Stalker. Remember Gerard? He he tried to get me to stop flying the drone and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> he was he, so he, mad about the drone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just just let us do whatever we want off the field. Exactly. exactly. Honestly, Omar, your uh, your honesty and your authenticity is is refreshing, man. And it's uh, it's great to see that you're still doing it. Um, genuinely appreciate you jumping on the podcast and and. Uh, and being a being a, a newly minted journeyman, we're uh, we're happy. Oh to yeah, have you. <laughs> yeah, man. Thank, yeah. Thank, thanks for having a thanks for having me on. Uh, it's great to see both of you at the same. You know, just hang out in this virtual room that we have here. But uh, I miss you guys. Uh, I miss the days back at Galaxy. Those were incredible. Uh, you said it That's like true. we were a close knit group, and and you know, too bad Seba couldn't be on this call. How about that? Huh? Yo, you you think somebody uh, maybe would would be able to smack him in his, in the back of his neck when the next time Especially you see him in the locker room? We got his we got his career started in the hot tub, and the guy. Yeah, I still remember the day. These days. The hot tub <laughs> interview too. was classic, I mean, iconic, even iconic, iconic. <laughs> remember uh, the, hey, Omar. The, you were doing show, showing him how to how to do the stare off into the distance, or what was it? <laughs> the, 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 the eclipse, eclipse. <laughs> the eclipse oh, the eclipse that was great hey Omar just for me dude I, I just want to get real with you real quick dude I think this was you know the single most best interview if that's a if that's a sentence that we've done and on, honestly honestly speaking I think you should do I think you should do more interviews I think you should get out there um, you know, like Garg said, your honesty is is fantastic, and I think that I think that it spoke true to not just me. You know, I'm not sure. I had I, luckily I had my shades on because you had me you had me tearing up, bud. Um, but I think that you should get your message out there. I think a lot of people need it, and if any listeners are struggling with mental health, uh, maybe we can put up. Josh Saunders is doing big things, uh, mental health wise. Omar, if you haven't connected with him, you should. Josh Saunders is helping a lot of people in the world with mental health. And there's a lot of people out there um, that will, that will give you some help. So for any males out there or females, um, you know, please reach out to somebody if you're struggling Um, and you, you are just, you know, you're, you're paving the way, dude. You're going to help a lot of people get your message out there. Don't, don't let this be your last interview. I thought, I thought it was fantastic. So don't stop. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. I appreciate you. Gordo, thank you for those words, man. It means a lot. Always coming from you. I'll, I've always looked up to you and Gargs and all the veterans I had around me. You guys uh, helped shape me. And so, um, you, you know, you guys taught me a lot. And so thank you for those words for sure. And I'll keep doing it, man. You know, just uh, keep being yeah, real. And, please do. and uh, that's the best thing to be. Just Just being real. That's right. That's the truth. Oh, um, stay healthy, man. Keep going. Pick up a few wins and uh, and good luck down the stretch. All right, man. Great to All see right, you buddy. guys. All right, brother. <laughs>